Hi, up here. Hi, I'm Bruce Blitz, and welcome to Cartooning with Blitz. I'm really glad you joined me today because today, today we're going to talk about cartooning and how anything, anything could happen in cartooning. Pretty tough. Hey, did you ever notice how in cartooning how no one ever falls until they notice that they're in the air? Well, and by the way, did you notice that right before I fell, I did one of these? That's called a take. And it happens in live action and in cartooning. And today, we'll draw a cartoon take. And we'll draw body language and other expressions as well. And for our feature of the day, flip books. One of my favorite things to do because it's a way to animate your drawings and make them move. And for our doodle trick portion, handy tunes. Finished cartoons from hands. So let's get started and let's draw our first drawing. It'll be a take. And I'm going to lay it out with my pencil. So stay with me. We'll take it step by step. Now, first, I'm going to draw an oval just like that. And I'm going to have his body coming back this way. Now, the good thing about cartooning is you can do things that you cannot do in real life. And that's what makes things funny. If you can do it in real life, why bother drawing it in a cartoon, right? We got cameras for real life. All right, now there's his legs, and he's jumping up in the air, doing a take. And I'm going to put his shadow right here, so you can see he's in the air. Now his arms. Well, let me see. One arm would be over here, and down to his side, and that circle indicates his hand. And over here, he's pointing. Now his head is facing in a three-quarter way, so we'll put some guidelines in to indicate that. Now I'm going to go right to marker. So we've got it laid down with the stick figure and shapes. And now we'll go in and add some detail. Now, right where that crisscross happens, I'm going to put his nose. See, the crisscross helped me to create a three-quarter view. Now, he's screaming, and that's a great expression because he's scared out of his mind, say. So we put a line like that, and then his bottom lip, and for his teeth. Well, you know what? We'll give him, like, funny cartoon teeth. And there's his tongue, and we'll darken everything else in. All right, now, for his eyes. Well, his eyes are going to be wide open. And small, little pupils like that makes it funnier. And eyebrows way up. And let's see, let's put his ear in. Now watch this. Right up here, I am going to put in, that's right, his hair, which has flown off his head. So let's make his head like a big egg. Coming around like this and a little shine, a little window effect, like it's a shiny head. Now some cartoon effects and accessories, like it flew up, and some perspiration. Now again, no one's hair flies off like this in a real life, but in a cartoon you can. Okay, now we're going to put his arm in, and here we're going to thicken up those lines that we've already laid down. Now here's his other arm, I mean his forearm, and here's his fist. All right, now we're going to put in his collar. Let's have him wearing a T-shirt and just go over that shape and stop there because we want to put his legs in. Now we're going to put his other arm in over here, so we'll thicken that and draw his forearm. Now he's going to be pointing, so let's have his thumb and his forefinger is pointing out this way, and now his finger is bent back. That's why they say you should never point at anybody, because you got one finger pointing and three pointing back at you. I learned that once, and I think it's a great tip. All right, now we're going to go over these sticks and do the legs. Now, this leg is the closest one to us, so I'm going to draw that first because it overlaps the other one. Now we can fix this up a little bit. Let's give him jeans. So let's go over that leg with some stitching. Right now, let's do the other leg, peeking out over here. Now you can't really see the whole thing, so we do this part, and then it stops right there. And you can thicken this up a little bit. All right, now we have some depth. Now some stitching for the detail, and we can continue that line. All right, it's getting there. Now we're going to put his feet in. One line like that, and around. And remember, we're seeing sort of the bottom of his feet because he's up in the air. 
So you see what we do? We put the heel in and some detail like that, some lines. And another one right over there, another shoe. All right. Now we're going to put some shadow in. And he's jumping in the air, doing a take, pointing. And some cartoon effects and accessories, like he just left the ground. Whoosh, right up there. Let's put a horizon line in. And there it is. I think it came out great. Now I'm going to use my eraser and erase the pencil lines and then color it in. Go right over the whole picture. And you can use any kind of eraser. You can use a pink eraser. This is a kneaded rubber eraser. It really doesn't matter. All right, now. Cartoons are everywhere, aren't they? It's a great opportunity for you in your own community. You might have people that are looking for someone who does a cartoon for a flyer, for a brochure, and they're just a part of our everyday lives. And in advertising, it's very handy because, if nothing else, it presents a friendly image for the company that they like to use cartoons. Here's some blue for his pants here. And they're constantly needing bigger and better gags to keep the attention to sell a product. And it works better with some products than others. All right, let's give them some stripes. You can color your cartoon in any way you want. A little bit of orange for the ground. This is orange, you glad. And some lines out like this cartoon effects and accessories. There he is. And that's a cartoon take. Now let's do another one. I'd like to show you a little experiment here and how to get a head that is smiling and going back gradually and increase the expression. I'll show you what I mean. I'll start right with marker. and I'm going to make some circles. One, two, three, and four. Okay, now what I'm going to do is put some guidelines in very, very lightly. This one, straight ahead. They're all straight ahead, but they're going to be bending a little bit. Now watch this one here. Bends a little bit, and this one here is higher. Bends a little more. And this one here is way up there. Now I'll put the other guidelines in. Now I'll start with the first one here. Now I'm going to put in some eyes. Just two black dots and some eyebrows up. And a nose. And a big smile. Now this is a person that will be beginning to laugh. Now, right there, there's no real expression of laughing, but maybe it's a <clears throat> like starting to think something's funny. Next one, these guidelines are wrapping around. Remember, this is not a flat shape on a page. This is a three-dimensional object, and that's how we have to think about it. So the guidelines are being, are being wrapped around. Now we're going to make those eyes up here a little bit. And the nose has also gone up a little bit because the head is tilting back. And that mouth, well, this time it's just a little bit open. And it says, chuckle. Chuckle. The laughing is beginning to happen. Now the next one, the head is tilted back much more. We're going to have the eyes shut and the eyebrows up. And here's the nose. And now the smile is much larger. And here's the tongue. And we'll darken all that in. And now it's ha-ha time. Ha-ha-ha. And some cartoon effects over here, like tears of joy. Now, the last one, the nose is right up, totally on top. And this whole shape is completely taken up with hysterics. And now it's more tears and larger effects. And that's what makes your cartoons come to life. Ha! How's that? Ha, 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 ha. And maybe even a ha. All right. And there you have it. Someone laughing in different degrees. All right. Let's do another one. And this time... Uh-oh. It's time for the gag sketch of the day. All right. This is a good one. You'll like this one. Okay. Take a look at this. It's a guy. That's right. And it says Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Can you guess what this is? All right. Get ready. He's got a weak stomach. See, he's got the days of the week. He's got a weak stomach. All right, let's do another sketch. That's a tough crowd, I'll tell you. That's a good one. You know that was a good one. 
All right, this time we're going to do an expression. And we're going to have someone kind of talking like this to somebody out of the side and pointing like this. Now watch how that works out. Start with a big shape because it's mostly going to be a person's face. And have a three-quarter view looking this way. Again, remember, think of it as a three-dimensional object. See, now it has roundness. And let's see, over here we'll put a circle and indicate the hand and arm. And there you go. Now I'm ready to go with my marker. Now we're going to draw his face, and he's going to be laughing like we did before. We'll have the eyes shut like this. The eyebrows up. Now let's give him a nose. Noses don't affect facial expressions. I don't know why that is. It just doesn't. It's the mouth and the eyes and the eyebrows. Now let's give him a big smile. Some teeth. Tongue. I'm darkening all that in. All right, now we're ready. This is the hand. Now, I'm going to draw the thumb. His hand is actually facing the other way, facing palms out. That's the first thing you want to ask yourself when you're drawing cartoon hands, is which way are the palms facing? Then it'll be easy. Okay, now here's the palm, and now we're going to draw some fingers. I'll start with this side. That way these can look like they're fitting behind. See how that one, this one overlaps that one, and we'll continue on. All right, now we're going to come down and draw the forearm and the side of the face. And here's the sleeve. All right, see how this person is speaking and doesn't want anybody to hear. Okay, let's put some hair on. And some hair coming out that way. All right, now the other. Now this hand is going to be like this. We see the knuckles. The fingers are bent back this way in a fist. Here's the forearm, and the sleeve is down here, and the thumb is pointing to something. And we put a nail on. The rule of thumb is I put a nail on when I get real close like that. If it was further back, I wouldn't bother. All right, now I have this body facing this way, and now let's add a little color. You know, cartoons are such a universal language I mean, think of it. You go to an airport or something where people speak different languages, so what do they do? They put up pictures, or cartoons, where you eat, and baggage claim. This way you don't have to speak the language. A little bit of red. And there you have it. Maybe for the cheeks a little bit. Let's give him a checkered shirt. And you got an expression where someone is talking about somebody and they're using their shoulders, hand, thumb, and it's a complete package. All right, let's do another one. We'll have the whole body of a guy angry. And I'm going to lay it out with my pencil. He's standing up and he's pounding or he's, his hand's in the air and he's talking on the phone, about to pound the desk. And he's leaning this way. Here's the desk, just a big rectangular shape, and here's his arm coming back, and that circle indicates his fist, and this one is his other fist up here. We're ready to go, we'll marker now, and draw this character in. First, his nose and his mouth. Well, it's a little like the fellow who was scared, but we'll change the expression by putting the eyebrows in down. So now he looks angry instead of scared. If they were up, it would look scared. See, sometimes a little subtlety like the eyebrows can change everything. All right, now we're going to put in his chin and his shirt and for his tie. Well, I'm even going to have his tie flaring out like this. And here's his sleeve. And this one's coming back towards him holding a telephone, so that'll overlap. Now let's put in his hand, and the phone that he's yelling into. All right, over here, we're going to put the side of his face and his sleeve. We're just thickening up the stick figure. Now, this is also a fist. Bent back like this, fingers bent back, palm, and there it is. All right, now put his jacket in, lapel. So you just build it a little bit at a time, 
and you can dress them up. Some buttons. And now let's put this line in because you're standing in front of a desk. Now, you know what? We can make this look like a fancy executive type desk just by doing one, one or two little things. Like, watch. Make a little detail, a little fanciness to it. Come back. Go up. Some lines this way to make it look like it's a shiny desk. And now some cartoon effects and accessory. First, let's put a wire from the phone coming to a box and some swirlies to his fist, like he's waving it around. Arms are moving, perspiring. Let's put a window behind him. A big picture window. He's a busy executive, maybe some buildings coming down this way. And there he is. I'm going to erase the pencil lines. And he's an actor now, because now we've incorporated body language, not just a facial expression. And maybe some quick color. And these are your actors. And now, you've really made him look like an actor, because it's not just a facial expression anymore. Have a little blue for a suit. I use my true blue color stick. And maybe a cartoon effect and accessory like that because he's screaming. And there he is, an angry businessman. Now it's all the time we have for right now. And a good way to practice is to get a mirror and make all kinds of facial expressions in the mirror like this. Uh, don't get caught. And then draw what you see on the paper down into cartoon style line. That's all there is to it. Now stay tuned for the feature of the day. All right, all right, places, places, everyone. Pla Excuse me, we're making a movie here. Quiet on the set, quiet on the set. We're making a movie, a very short movie, but this next segment is the most fun that you can have with your drawings, and that is to make them move, animate them. And you do this with a flip book. And I've made this short movie, and I'll show it to you right now. Ready? It's a fish tale, I call it. Very short movie, however, it still tells a story. Ready? Action. Little fish swims in from the left. He swims off. He comes back. He swims off again. He comes back, and this time he stays here. Uh-oh, look out, it's trouble. Uh-oh, no, another one's coming, and he swims off. Whew. It was touch and go there for a while, folks. Whew. Now, the good thing about a flip book is you don't need much. You need a marker, some colored pencils, and a pad like this. Now, any ordinary notepad will do, and you can get this in any stationery store. But it's important that you use something that is connected on one side. You can even have papers that are stapled together, but that's important because... The drawings and the pages have to be registered. That means it always has to fall into the same spot. And it will do that if it's connected on one side. All right. Now let's get started and let's create our own flip book. And this one will be of a bird in flight. And we start at the back of the flip book. I'll show you why in a moment. And what we're going to do is draw a little bird. And this is going to be a cycle. Now, a cycle means a series of drawings that gets repeated over and over again to create the illusion of movement. Now here's his wing and you want to keep the detail very simple. And here's a little cloud over here and the reason for that is because you have to make many many drawings and you don't want to have a lot of detail to recopy every time. Now we take the next page and lay it on top. Now the reason why we work from the back is because we can see that drawing now which is good because we want to trace the features that do not move, like his beak and his body and his tail feathers. But the wing was up there. We're going to bring it down just a little bit. And in a cycle, you can have six drawings, seven drawings, two drawings even work. Now, see that cloud? We're going to move it over here behind him. Now, we're ready for the third drawing. And again, the face, well, that doesn't move. And the beak and the eye. This time, the wing, well, it's going to be way down here and then the body. And if you don't draw the things that aren't supposed to move as accurate as you can, like the beak and the tail, what'll happen, how about the cloud, wait a minute, that's over here. What'll happen is it'll appear when you flip it to keep changing shape or go all over the place. You wanna keep it as still as you can. That's why you're tracing. Okay, now I'll do one more for you. 
And here's the beak, here's his eye. This time his wing is way down here. So you can see the last part of the wing, so the last drawings. Now all you have to do is move it into a new place. Now that cloud, well, it's over here now. Now for the sake of time, I've done one for you, all finished up, and I'll show it to you right now. The bird in flight. Ready for this? This is pretty cool. Here he is, flying around, and that cloud is flipping by. And pretty soon, I do make him fly off. I kind of move him to the left. There he goes. I even animated the word, the end, and that even goes off. Watch this. Whoop, there it is. Now, you can make your own flip book. Tell you what, I'll even give you a couple ideas. How about a cartoon effect and accessory like the word pow? I'm going like that and the smoke coming out. We have someone running or a car whizzing by. The possibilities are endless. So start flipping. Now stay tuned for cartoon doodle tricks. Welcome to today's Doodle Tricks, and today we're going to do Handy Tunes. Handy Tunes are cool, and i got some handy friends in the studio. I'd like to welcome them right now. Hi, guys. Hi. All right, let's start our first Handy Tune. And let me see. I'm going to draw a thumb. And how many fingers is this hand holding up? Charles. Four. Four, right. All right, now right here I'm going to put a triangle and then some eyes over here and some whiskers and how about some buck teeth I like that mm -hmm. make it a funny looking character and over here some more eyes eyebrows a nose more whiskers and four fingers turn into four ears which breaks down to two rabbits like this yeah. All right, let's do another one. And this time, I'm going to draw four fingers again, but with the thumb out. We're branching out a little bit. So here's the thumb. And here's the fingers. Three, four. Come back down like this. Now, let's put the nails on. There's a nail on the thumb and the fingers. Now, if we turn the sketch over, watch this. And I add some detail to it. Well, I won't tell you what it is. You'll have to guess. Put an eye over here, an eyebrow. And this here, well, let's see. Make some strokes like this. And an ear, like a teardrop. And a big smile. And let's turn this part into a tail. Anybody know what this is turning into? A reindeer. A reindeer, that's right. And not just any ordinary reindeer. Rudolph. Let's turn it into Rudolph by putting a little red over here. Because Rudolph was a handy guy to have around, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's all the time we have for today. And I hope you've enjoyed it at home. And I hope you guys did in the studio. And for our tip of the day, a mistake is a chance to try again. No big deal. That's what erasers are for, right? And if you can't erase it, you get a new piece of paper. I'm Bruce Blitz saying thanks for being with me today and help me out, guys. Keep, Keep on, on cartooning. cartooning. Just like that. <laughs>